and so it begins. I must turn this, which is now this, into something that kind of looks like this, I hope. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Okay guys, Snowman back with you again. Uh, I'm going to try and do a little bit of the sanding on this intarsia piece I've been working on. Uh, I've already started some of the work, uh, doing some of the forming and pieces like the branch and, let's see, where is it? As I try to put this together without it being glued. Uh, like the branch and one of the thorns and well I've been uh, hacking away at this uh, pine with my Dremel with a 120 grit sanding drum on it it's the finest drum I can get and with this with this uh, pine being so soft it's uh, still too aggressive so what I basically do is I do the basic I do the generalized forming with the Dremel and then I just hand sand it smooth. I have some uh, 220 and some uh, 300 paper that I've been using. So that gives it a nice finish. So I've been working very closely with the picture in the magazine that uh, came with your, the uh, plans for the piece. I'm getting there, slowly, very slowly. So this guy is that piece of the branch. Now, of course, it doesn't look at all like a branch right now. And this piece is part of his chest. So what I can do is here, let me get the magazine off to the side and show you what the leaf I'm talking about here. And here's where the interesting part comes into play. This is the other piece of the same branch. Now you can see how much material I took off, which was way too much. So now I have to bring these pieces down to the level of this one so that everything matches, which is pretty much why I made out everything out of such thick wood. It gives me, like I said, it gives me a chance to screw up and um, still have some meat left over to work with. So, I'm going to do some more sanding. Give you a closer picture of it. Now you can get a general idea of it. Zoom just does not do it justice, so let me get the camera physically closer. So you can see it's coming along from the flat pieces to the contoured pieces, so give me time. I am taking this, like I said in the last video, a hundred times, I am taking this slowly because I really don't know what I'm doing. And at least I admit I don't know what I'm doing. So. Okay, so finally pulled the wraps off of um, this branch piece here so and get to getting on the sanding and it's gonna look like a total hack job till I get at it with the um, hand sanding this stuff Now the reason I'm taking off so much wood is because I have to get this height, this piece of the branch here, down to this piece of the branch here. So um, I have to take off quite a bit of wood to match that. But as I'm taking the wood off and taking it down, I got to be conscious of how uh, the rest of the bird sits on it. So I'm not going too overboard here. Yeah, careful. 
That's the problem with standing near the end of the piece. Uh, if the drum grabs and goes over the edge, you could shake the wood in ways you never intended to. Like that. God damn it. Ah. And now what may end up happening at some point is I might actually have to make a new piece of this branch because I've slipped and hacked it a couple of times now. A scroll saw doesn't move. I can set the camera up for that pretty easily, but moving my hands around... I don't know how Ricky does get such a good shot on some of his pictures. Okay then. <coughs> so, let's see. Let's see if it still roughly fits the piece. There we go. Now we're getting a lot closer to these two halves of the branch being the same height right here at the claws. But anyways, I have to take a little bit more stock off of this side of the branch so that this and this are at the equal height. They, and with the lighting, they kind of look the same, but they don't match up and contour. So that's going to be the biggest part of it. Now, I'm sure you, in any Intarsia artist that watches this video is going to cringe in horror at, at the way that I'm going about this, but if you have any pointers that aren't just being mean and going, what the heck are you doing, uh, please put them in the comments. <laughs> Did I mention this was going to be a rustic piece? <laughs> Alrighty then, so... Okay, I'd say the branches look pretty fairly equal at this point, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop there and um, start contouring these two little clock... Oh, I've got to get the camera closer. You guys are not going to have the first clue what I'm talking about. Zoom! There we go, now you can actually see what the heck I'm talking about, because the camera's just a little bit closer now. Okay, so, like I was saying earlier, I have these two sides of the branch. The contours are matching. I already have the uh, thorn here and these two talons sanded. Now I have to get going on these two talons. And, no, talons. It's a little hummingbird. It's, it's toes but you get the general gist of things. So, we pull pieces apart. i show you how freakishly tiny these pieces are to work with. As you see the tip of my finger. And we go from there. So, I'll zoom you guys back out a little bit. And, yeah. And voila! We have another toe. <laughs> now see, as I put the unsanded one in there, you can now see the drastic difference in um, size. So. so this is where I've gotten to so far. I still need to finish um, rounding off the end of this one, and then I need to start in on this one here, so we slide the branch into place. Everything's starting to take shape. Yeah. So, yep, much more sanding to go before I sleep.
really need to replace that Dremel. I don't know, it's not even a Dremel, it's a, uh, a Black & Decker, but I used to use this when I was doing stone jewelry uh, years ago, and the bearing at this end got full of rock dust and is basically just a steel bushing at this point, it's so worn out. Uh, unfortunately, they've designed the tool so I can't take it apart and replace the bearing. So. It's either buy a new tool or keep using it till it absolutely dies. I think I'll just keep using it till I can afford a new one. But what I'm trying to do is this is one of the pieces that um, I'm trying to blend in three different directions at the same time because it the feathers are uh, right underneath the neck. Uh, it's uh, these feather pieces right here and it's actually this piece that I have my finger on so try and blend it and get it all rounded off and looking pretty and all that and hopefully have it look halfway decent by the time I'm done with it now I'm not going to be doing a lot of the full contouring of the piece because this is my first intarsia I am not super confident in sanding things without sanding them too far if that makes any sense so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it so it has a nice rounded edge on it uh, stain the pieces the right color since I'm not using uh, separate different woods like they suggest this piece they actually suggest to use like seven different hardwoods that I just <laughs> to, be to be blunt about it I don't have the money for so since this is an isn't a piece for a customer, it is an experimental piece, I'm perfectly okay with just using pine. So, yes, 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 I've repeated myself again, sorry. I don't know if I'm even standing on camera at this point, because it's, it, I've come to find out that it's hard to sand things on camera. <laughs> um and have them come out right because you're sanding things a lot further away from yourself than you would um, normally hold them. So, now we'll just, oh yeah, I gotta take that down further. The lines don't line up at all. Yeah, so that's why the Dremel sounds like it's about to die because it is. Uh, Okay, that's getting there. It's blending a lot better than I thought it would, so I think before I go too far, I should probably just smooth it out and call it good. Yeah, you can see. Not too bad. Oh, okay, it does fit there. I just had it pointed the wrong direction. So that goes like that. Oops, I'll help, the, help if I zoomed out. That one goes there. And that one goes there. So those all join together. So, and I'll get going on the rest of these. Uh, do a little bit more sanding and um, keep you guys up to date. Far over the misty mountains rise He was standing upon the
I still don't have this top wing piece uh, low enough. I need to bring this profile down at, at a curve to, uh, oops, that's not even on camera. I need to bring this, this top profile down on a curve to match the uh, body profile on the piece. So I have to take off even more material. Hopefully that's low enough. There we go. That's better. Uh, it's still supposed to stick up above the uh, body line a little bit. Uh, let's see if I can get you a better look at that. Yeah, see, it's, it's supposed to. This is the body panel here that it, that this wing piece is supposed to sit above, according to. Uh, this picture now in the picture the piece doesn't sit up all that much but uh, uh, it also doesn't seem to match the lower part of the wing very well either so I'm just uh, adjusting the piece to my tastes and hopefully other people agree with me because I really do want to sell this piece eventually Oops. there we go uh, I've been avoiding these neck feathers because that's pretty much going to be the easiest uh, sanding of the bunch. Uh, trying to get the harder pieces done first, like these, th whoops, as I pull the piece apart, like these uh, smaller p wing pieces and the thorns, I still need to do those, um, get those done, and then I'll attack the headpiece, because the headpiece has a weird uh, concave dish, um, well, there's right around the uh, eye right here, which I have a trick for making this eye a round dome. Um, so I'm going to save that for later, but what I need to do is sand all three of these pieces at the same time so that the dish that's, uh, that's basically the eye socket for the head uh, starts at the bottom of this top piece, goes through the eye socket, and then goes to the uh, lower part of, of the head all at the same time. So that's going to be an interesting one. Basically what I'm going to end up having to do is hold these three pieces together like this and come in with the uh, with the uh, sanding drum and just uh, go through it all at the same time. Uh, luckily being all the same wood the uh, sanding drum isn't going to grab on one piece versus another so I should be able to get away with it but we'll see. <laughs> The ones that the pieces on this intarsia that have me the most nervous are these extremely thin uh, beak pieces. Now, why they had to make the beak two pieces, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, we will see what we see. Uh, the there's not a lot of contouring to them. I basically just have to round these outer edges over and do a very minor rounding on the separation between the upper and lower beak and uh, yeah, we should be good so see. for some reason the camera does not want to focus no focus for snow might be the lighting I don't know anyways so per usual more sanding sanding and yep Still sanding. Carrying things outside. Yeah, 
My neighborhood seems to have the loudest neighbors, and I never could understand why. Kids scream. Now, I understand. They're kids. So, they don't really understand volume control. But the constant screaming of the kids, that I don't get. Uh, I am out of caffeine. I shall return. Ta-da! And the sanding is finally done. And the hardest part of all this, and you really... Uh, was those toes. Uh, getting a, such a small piece, the right shape, with a Dremel and some uh, small pieces of sandpaper, was a lot more of a challenge than I thought it would be. These uh, neck feathers, which I thought were going to be challenging, really weren't all that bad. So, this wing, though, boy, you can't really see it until I stain it. You really can't see the contours because of it all being the same color. But, let's see if I can move you around here. No, that's more into the light. Go to the light, my friend. Go to the light. Alright, well, anyways. As I've jumped the camera around. Sanding is done. So, all I have left to do is start staining, get all the right colors, hopefully get it to look halfway decent now. These are the colors that the uh, article wants the bird to be. I have most of these stains, but I'm missing a couple of the colors. So, uh, or one of the colors anyways, and it's this, uh, these wine colored uh, neck feathers. I'll, I'll figure it out. I mean, it's just a matter of um, trial and error to get the colors right. But uh, I know you guys hate multi-part videos, but it looks like this video is running even longer than the first part. So I'm going to cut everything here now that the sanding is finally done. And I will do the staining for a part three of the video because uh, I want to take my time on it and not rush it just for the sake of another YouTube video so as always guys <laughs> sending is done first intarsia piece is built well not really built nothing's glued together yet but it's done as far as the uh, woodworking side of it now I get to go to the coloring joy alright guys as always more to come